afternoon. Uh, next time you find yourself with two polystyrene cups, just stick them bottom to bottom like this. Then get some tape and wrap the tape around the cups. The next thing you're going to need is a broken elastic band. Wrap the elastic band around twice, and you've made a catapult. Pull it back, let go. Thank you. Surprise is a wonderful way of grabbing people's attention. Surprise plus mystery is a great way of grabbing their thinking. Uh, let me give an example of something I use in schools with science teaching. I've got this wheel here, and you'll notice there's a ramp going uphill. If I place it at the top, it will roll down. If I place it at the bottom, it will roll up. So possibly our first reaction is, wow. And then we rapidly move on to the how. How does it work? So let me tell you how it works. It's really simple. We've got a thin string running off stage into the wing. Someone's pulling it. No, let me tell you how it works. There's magnets embedded in the wheel and magnets in the board, and it's, it's going like this. There's an air jet over the side pushing it up. There's helium inside the wheel. There's a hamster running furiously. Here's the thing. I believe we're too quick to move to an explanation, too quick to skip over that fragile middle ground between the wow and the how. That state of knowing and not knowing, that state where magic exists, where curiosity is given free reign. And it saddens me that so many people have lost that <laughs> curious spirit. Uh, my daughter, behind me on the screen, a bit older now, she's three. She came back from nursery school recently and announced she could no longer wear her dinosaur trainers because apparently girls aren't allowed to wear dinosaurs. <laughs> I know. My daughter is learning from an early age that society is expecting her to conform, that possibilities are being shut down for people. And projecting forward into the future, she's going to go to school soon. And she's going to learn that playtime equals break time, with this underlying message that play and learning are somehow separate. And she'll be ranked, she'll be scored, she'll be assessed at school, she'll learn her place in the classroom, she'll learn her place in society. Uh, those tests will test her ability to regurgitate quick, simple answers. Unknowns will be boxed up, uh, placed off limits, or hidden away. And she'll learn the consequences for making mistakes socially, academically, financially. She'll learn to keep her head down. Her internal motivation will be swapped out for an external carrot and stick motivation. And as she goes on to the world of work, she'll be uncomfortable with the unknown. She'll be uncomfortable with complex situations. She'll want and she'll give quick, simple answers. She'll be risk averse, not wanting to stick her neck out. That's not what I want for my daughter. That's not what I want for any child. You see, education for me is not about giving the answer. It's not about giving the answers. Education is about finding connections between different things and forging new connections. Education, ultimately for me, is about giving the learner confidence and skills to go and explore the world themselves. I believe there's power in mystery. Mystery shocks the system because mystery shouts out, there's more here than you think. I love this quote from Dennis Covington. Dennis said, mystery is not the absence of meaning, it's the presence of more meaning than we can comprehend. And there's power in wonder, in serious play, because wonder beckons us all in and it whispers the question, I wonder what if. And there's power in magic, because magic says, let's throw out the rule books. The limits have changed. As a magician, I juggle with reality. I dance with the impossible. I push back boundaries. I open up new frontiers. Why? Because I want to lift my audience's dreams and imaginations to a new plane. And the reason magicians keep secrets is not because we're selfish, but because we know the explanation robs them of that experience, brings them back down to earth with a bump. So it'd be wrong of me to not show you a magic trick. So. We're going to ho hopefully catch this on uh, camera over here with Lewis. So we've got here, we've got a red chip and a blue chip. So that's a red chip and a blue chip. Or is it a blue chip and a red chip? Now, my background is atomic physics. 
Thank you. My background's atomic physics. Atomic physics is this mind-bending concept that says that at a scale smaller than atoms, the world's not as we think. It's not clockwork. It's not predictable. It's all about probability. It's all about possibility. It's all about simultaneous answers. You see, a particle could be here and here at the same time. And the weird thing is, when we make an observation, it forces the universe into making a choice to one particular spot. The world returns to being clockwork and predictable. So, for me, magic is about creating this quantum state, this state of knowing and not knowing. It's placing you in front of something that should be impossible, and yet it's true. And if that's true, what else is true? Magic opens up the world. It opens up doors. I love the quote from Alice Through the Looking Glass, when the White Queen said to Alice, sometimes I try to believe six impossible things before breakfast. Now, I would like to add to that diet that we should try and wrestle with six mysteries before lunch. Because when we become comfortable with mysteries, the unknown, the unknowable, we become more resilient. We become more open to new ideas, new possibilities, new perspectives. So, I'd like to encourage us all to spend more time between the wow and the how. The state of knowing and not knowing. Because... I want that for my daughter. I want her not to be too quick to jump to assumptions. I want that for all of us. And I don't want you to lose that. So I thought what we'd do, we'd create a quantum state in this room. And I'm going to split the room. So we've got the stools at the bottom, and we've got the circle at the top. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask the whole of the stools to close their eyes, heads down, literally for a few seconds. And the circle just have to remember what they see on the screen. And then we're going to swap round. So here we go. Circle, eyes closed, heads down. Two seconds for the circle start now. OK, time's up. You can look up stools. Circle, look down. Here's your two seconds, stools. OK, and everyone look up. So here's the question. Can you remember what shape was in the middle? Uh, what, what did we see down here? 13. And what did you see at the top? So you, who gave me a wave? Who saw B? In fact, a cheer, because you can't see at the top. Give me a cheer. And a cheer, who saw 13? Yes. That's what you saw. So thank you for your attention. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Cheers.